Robert Stansberry, Dirk, and uh, John Hardy are uh, competing for a spot on the Berkeley County Commission out of the same district, Tuscarora. And we spoke with both of these gentlemen at the forum. We've had both of them individually on the program. And they will be our final two guests of the show before we shut it down for Election Day uh, tomorrow who are competing for uh, a slot. So, Dirk, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, it is a pleasure to be back with you. Mm -hmm. And you uh, left the best uh, competition <laughs> for last. Yeah. I wanted to make sure it was local. <laughs> and this right. is indeed yeah. local. Yeah. Right. That's right. So, uh, Dirk, for those who might be listening for the first time or maybe among the thousand to twelve hundred homes that are built in this uh, county every single year and maybe just kind of stumbled onto this show, give us the Dirk resume. Well, my name is Dirk Stansberry. I'm a civil engineer. I've been engineering and working in this area in this county since 1987. I have been very involved in all of the youth programs around here. I refereed youth soccer uh, here and elsewhere. I'm currently a major in the Civil Air Patrol, and I work with the cadets on aerospace education, uh, uh, STEM type stuff. And I'm uh, also the treasurer and very active in my church. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to get that done. I've, I've had time with the county as a county engineer, seeing how all the components of the infrastructure, the development, and how government works inside and how we get things done. So uh, although I appreciate uh, Mr. Hardy's experience in Charleston, uh, where the rubber meets the road is here, and I have actually been able to get some miles on that uh, vehicle. So. Now, I noticed you left out your experience as a surveyor, which Bill insisted that you had in the first <laughs> appearance here on the program. You sure don't want to include that then here, Bill? Well, I did I did actually uh, have a surveyor's license, but... Um, See, there you go, hey, Bill. You go. <laughs> Wait, that was that. your bone, Bill. Let it go. Let it go. Take the win. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk. See you, Rob. See? It all worked out, Bill. It all worked out. That one's a... A long story, but it has to do with uh, you actually had reciprocity many, many years ago that if you were a PE, you could also be a surveyor. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I agree with the surveyor. There's a lot more to it than actually sitting behind a gun, uh, surveying gun, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> uh, taking shots. I mean, there's a lot of research, uh, a lot of courtroom stuff. If, if you love history, you love uh, research and you want to get outside and surveying is a great opportunity and we need more in this county that's getting to be a big problem even the bigger companies are having trouble keeping staff on that it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great job and a respectable job Dirk I want to get into some of the things you started to talk about during our candidate forum one of those was the county's relationship with the State Department of Highways and how we can uh, perhaps have a more efficient highway system that benefits the Eastern Panhandle. Can you get into that a little bit? The I, I really enjoy working with the local uh, staff, uh, the people. Uh, they they try to help you and get it through that, but they have their hands tied both through Burlington, um, which they have. And I get their problem. They've got seven counties, and that's why they're in Burlington is pretty much geographically centered. Uh, although the, most of the work is over here, I mean, we almost need our own district to take care of the three counties on this side. But it's trying to get the state to recognize that uh, we have certain issues here. Um, they may mirror things like they have in Morgantown because of the growth in Morgantown, but they need to be able to work with us, not around us. They cannot be just coming in and say, we're going to do this for you well fine but we really needed that done so that not enough communications from uh, down Charleston way on where the best areas to put their emphasis and their money and their direction on that but like I said working with them locally I, they've been great they're they're overworked there's not enough staff they're down double digits in employees and they do have seven counties to deal with the county recently renewed their contract with their lobbyists. You're not on the commission yet, but uh, if it happens that you are, do you have thoughts on how that contract should proceed and whether or not you would support it? 
Um, we've talked about this in the past in the last uh, opportunity, and um, the premise, I, I agree with the premise. Um, you've got the state legislators and the people down there having to run their committees and go all through that stuff, and you're not able to go around and knock on every door and try to get them to come on board. I, I haven't actually seen the contract. I did see the original proposal to uh, for qualifications. Um, so I'd like to look into that a little closer. Um, I do know that uh, other counties and Marshall and WVU also have lobbyists down there. Uh, they seem to be paying a little bit less than what we are. So I'd like to look into that a little. But uh, the premise I understand and talking with uh, uh, Mr. Gokenauer, he was convinced when he saw some of the changes that were there, and I think I need a little more to be convinced as well, but I, I agree with the premise, and I understand that, and I would like to have that power or not information showing up in Charleston. Bill? Yeah, uh, uh, Dirk, your opponent, uh, John Hardy, uh, what are the do you have differences policy difference between yourself and john and what are they well if in both of our debates um oftentimes you see us uh we may not be exactly on the same path but we're running parallel and we agree a lot of things because i have a small business as well i understand that you get your employees paid before you get paid type of thing and dealing with um all of that I also agree with him that I'm a very fiscally conservative. Um, I'm tight with the with the money, um, and so there's a lot of things that we went down that we are very close. I think the two areas that we are not are in zoning and with um, uh, home rule. Uh, those two areas, we kind of need that. Uh, Mr. Hardy talks about having some restrictions on growth and, and even his ads, but if you don't have any tools to do that, it's one thing to say it, but there are very few tools that can actually redirect. We can't stop it, but we can redirect it. Zoning is one of them. Now, Mr. Hardy will immediately say, well, that's taking away rights. Not necessarily, because what we need to do and have somebody that's actually worked with zoning and been in there to see the good, the bad, and the ugly of it, and I've seen some ugly, we cannot allow, if we do choose to have zoning and the choice is going to be the public, I would not unilaterally go for zoning. It would need the uh, mandate from the public. So what I would like to do is, if we get that mandate, that we ensure that it fits Berkeley County and not Arlington or Cleveland or San Francisco, but it fits Berkeley County. And there's one component I want to stick in that each one of the ordinance boxes of every zone is something called mutual benefits. We well, can actually negotiate with the county to come up with, if you can demonstrate that you can preserve as much ground as you're developing, it gets to be a mutual benefit. We get the preservation and we get the development too. The example would be a bean, a soybean, 100 acres of soybean. As an engineer, they come in, the simplest way for me to chop that up and is go two acre lots, well in septic, run a road down the middle of it and uh, sell them off. In a mutual benefits, you might be able to do uh, you would have to, obviously, this would be, you find somebody who wants to buy your property, and they would do this. The, the, the uh, uh, descendant or the farmer who's leaving the area is, doesn't have to do this. So you find somebody who wants to buy it. They come in and negotiate, and depending on the site, one site you can probably get away with a 50 building lots and still have 50 to 60 acres of bean field. And there's other ways, uh, other counties have done different things. So what you're doing is augmenting the farmland protection by getting the developer to find more and more places to reserve that. And there's more than one way, and that's why it's a negotiation versus do it this way, do it that way. No, it's got to be a mutual benefit. Everybody's got to get something out of it. 
Okay. You know, excuse me. Uh, can I follow sure. up on the home rule part? You mentioned home rule, and you did not. Um, there again, um, I think I'm for that. Um, and one of the components I mentioned earlier uh, as we talked, I'm not actually for the one cent increase in tax so much. Uh, I'd rather see us reduce costs before we add more taxes. But that's not the only thing that home rule gives you. That gives us ordinances and ways that we can address problems that are not one size fit all with the whole state. Uh, there are many things out here that would I like to redirect that uh, uh, studies into fixing things. Uh, <laughs> we have truly orphan roads in this county, in the state actually, that the state doesn't claim them. There's no homeowners association. Nobody has them. Uh, one of the historically oldest roads in the state, nobody owns, nobody controls. It's nothing but a giant pothole from one end to the other. With home rule, we might be able to find ways to address that for those people who have to use those roads, actually would be able to pass through them without ripping their axles off. So that's an area where home rule would be very beneficial, not just the tax side. Like I said, I'd rather delay that until we actually need it. I want to go back to the, to the zoning thing. You, you say it's not about individual rights, and that's true after zoning passes and people buy into zoning. But before zoning passes, for people who currently own unzoned property, it absolutely is. I mean, I'm devil's advocate here. So how is it not, if, if you go, if, if somebody's got that, that 100 acre of, of soybeans right now, and then we pass, right now, they can sell it forever what they want it to be without zoning. Then we pass zoning, we have limited what Farmer Jones can do with his 100 acres of, of soybeans. Now, after he sells that to whatever he's allowed to sell it for, now that person who buys it knows the new, the new rules and, and he plays by those rules. But we've changed the rules, we moved the goalposts for anybody who owns property the day before zoning passes. It absolutely affects their property rights. How does it not? Well, first, let's segregate that. If it's a bean field, it's a bean field. There's no changing there. If it's a um, <laughs> Dollar General, it's a Dollar General. If it's um, a gun shop, it's a gun shop. It doesn't change that at all. What you're talking about is most likely a farmer has passed away and the children live in Spokane, Washington, and they don't want anything to do with it. But what I pointed out was most builders don't really care about the size of the lot, and most banks don't either. They, the value is in the house. So if I can put 50 houses on 100 acres and still have 50 acres of beans, that's a win for everybody. On the other hand, if I'm the child of Farmer and Jones and I live in Spokane by, and I, I can't have more money from a factory that I can put there. or Well, or, you're not going to be able to put a factory there because you don't have the darn infrastructure. I, I'm, 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 I'm painting the, the, the larger picture here. Without zoning, the, the owner of the property can put anything he wants on that property, provided there, that you have the infrastructure for it. Once you install, Once you say you cannot put a factory or a Dollar General or a 7-Eleven or it must be it must be residential it cannot be convert, um, commercial then that that does in fact you can't I, I, I think it's disingenuous to say the you're passing not, zoning does not affect property rights. you're not hearing you that's this isn't your father's zoning this is Ranson this is Arlington this is other places what I'm saying this has to be tailored and you're not seeing the fact that this preserves all of those rights, and you can still do what's capable of putting it there. You, believe it or not, we already have zoning. It's one zone. We have one ordinance. So, yeah, no, you can't put anything you want on your property. You can't put a, a landfill on there. You can't uh, put something on there that is detrimental to the area. What you need to do is follow the current ordinance, and all zoning does is make subordinances. My point is, if you need somebody, if we're going to do that, you need somebody who understands ordinances so that we don't put something in there that is totally 
draconian. And that's why with putting in this clause, it allows you to negotiate in. And of course, you're going to find somebody that wants to buy the property before you do this. And what they will do, they'll be the ones flipping this and working the negotiation. You can still live in Spokane, Washington, have nothing to do with it. And you would end up with the benefits of having 50 lots and 50 acres of beans, too. Dirk Sansbury, our guest here on the program, candidate for Berkeley County Commission as we are on the eve of uh, Election Day and this finally ending uh, this uh, election season. Uh, Dirk, what are your plans between now and Election Day tomorrow? Are, are you doing any campaigning or door knocking still, or has that phase ended? Um, I'm still driving around and, and uh, waving my signs, and I'll do that for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, well, While you're doing a lot of driving, you notice there's still a lot of litter in the county. I think the uh, thanks to Eddie Gokenhauer and others, we and Mike Lang, we've made a cut into it. What could you? What can we do to address roadside litter? You know what? We've got a law against it. Uh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but you know, uh, nobody actually enforces it. Um, the one thing that uh, I'm very again back to the Civil Air Patrol, we. Uh, have adopted highways around the airport and uh, the bags of stuff and the strange things that we pick up, uh, including sharps, which are needles, and uh, other paraphernalia pop up as well. So what we need to do is to take what we've got and find ways to be more aggressive in uh, stopping that litter. Um, <laughs> I always thought it'd be an interesting thing to have the um, state police um, academy um, have their final exam to go out one of these places where they dump everything from furniture to, and, and actually see if they could track it down and find out who dumped it there and do forensic. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, now, the, but I, I'm sorry, going off uh, on that. I was going to say, yeah, the uh, the roadside dumps are, are one thing, uh, but it's a roadside litter that catches our attention. And it's easy to say we'll have the police monitor, but you don't monitor somebody every 45 minutes throwing out a cup of coffee. It, so. it comes down to a lot of things that we uh, have going on is information lack of. Um, we we uh, often hear beginning here about the radon, and we're trying to get that out. We also have lead in pipes. We also have this. So we need to be getting into the minds, particularly of our youth. And one thing that I would definitely do is have uh, informational days uh, for our uh, schools where we would interact with them and and just give them some ideas on what should not happen and one of them is throwing stuff out the windows um and to we're going to this is a long-term thing and it's more of an educational thing there are there are people who come back and talk about being in uh european cities and not seeing one piece of trash so it, it's an attitude thing it is but uh 20 years or so ago we did a very aggressive push with the with the schools to do just that started with the elementary and worked through senior high and i cannot tell that it made a nickel's worth difference because 80 percent probably 90 percent of the kids do not litter it's that small percent of litter and 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 their parents do it i would hope that most of the litter i'm seeing when we pick it up are not the children because That's there's right. a heck yeah. of a lot of beer and uh, yeah. these little shot yeah, which, little bottles. Yeah, I, it's amazing how many people must throw alcohol out their car windows. Uh, or either that, or it's falling off with the garbage trucks as they drive around. I don't know, but it's amazing when I go walking along the road near my house, how many beer cans and fifths uh, bottles that you see buried in tall grass i mean are you just drinking while you're driving and chucking it out the window as you go by what is that about and i do not think it's the uh the crash cans come excuse me crash trucks i think it's from automobiles yeah Yeah, that's for sure Uh, uh, dirk let's uh talk about parks in in berkeley county and uh, as a county commissioner what would you like to see happen with the park situation um i'm very pleased with the direction they're going with it i hope we can get some uh, additional parks um and I would like to also see when we have 
you know, we got better part of 30 different uh, commissions and agencies that if we can start working some together, the uh, museum and historical people mm -hmm. working with them because, for example, uh, where uh, St. Andrews takes off of 901, there's a little triangle there that had a, a marker, historical marker, and it's been vandalized and destroyed, and and we need to keep that up. And maybe with working with the history side of it, and also creating some parks to go along with history. The the wonderful thing up there at the uh, uh, Falling Waters Battlefield. Mm -hmm. I'd also, um, you know, just a, a brain little idea that just popped in my head a few weeks ago that we don't have a state park in Berkeley County or Jefferson. You know, the Roundhouse would be a great state park. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, it, it floated, you know, running up the flagpole, see if anybody salutes it, but uh, those type of things, getting all of the agencies to be working together uh, and pulling those resources with parks, with history, with all of this, and maybe we can expand and, and uh, improve the whole situation. And that's what I like to do. I like to see how I can get different components to work together mm -hmm. and not trying to each going off in a tangent of their own. 60 strict seconds, Dirk. They're yours. Tell folks why they should vote for you. They should vote for me because I will be diligent working for you. As I said, I'm going to make sure that we cut the spending before we find new taxes. And um, I just, I just love Berkeley County. Well, great to have you on the program here. It's uh, been fun interviewing you over the last couple of months as well, Dirk. Uh, are you doing anything uh, election nights uh, special? Are you going anywhere? Or watch party or uh, just hanging out at home? Probably hang out at home <laughs> or or pick up signs <laughs> <laughs> afterward. Um, yeah, I did say that. I said may I may do that just to. Uh, well, actually, I've got a cap meeting, so. That'll be it's Civil Air Patrol. Yeah. 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 Well, best of luck to you. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll meet, uh, we've already met him several times, of course. John Hardy will be on the program coming up in, uh, well, just after the commercial break here. This segment.